Hi everyone, my name is Mark, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Crystal Rogers, a 35-year-old mother from Bardstown, Kentucky, was known for her dedication to her children. She lived 45 miles southeast of Louisville and shared custody of her four children with her ex-husband, Keith. Despite their separation, Crystal and Keith maintained an amicable relationship for the sake of their children. Her youngest son, who was only two years old at the time, was with her current boyfriend, Brooks Houck. Because Crystal had always been a reliable and responsible parent, her mother, Sherry Ballard, found it strange when she failed to answer her phone on July 5, 2015. Crystal usually responded to Sherry's calls, but the lack of communication was causing Sherry growing concern. It had been 24 hours since Sherry last heard from her daughter, and with each passing hour, her worry intensified. Crystal's absence was out of character, and Sherry's maternal instincts were telling her something was amiss. Sherry couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Sherry tried contacting Crystal multiple times throughout the day, but her efforts went unanswered each time. She decided to reach out to Crystal's friends and family, hoping someone would know where Crystal might be. Unfortunately, no one had seen or spoken with her recently. Around the same time, Brooke, Crystal's younger sister, contacted Sherry to inform her that she, too, had been unable to reach Crystal. Brooke shared with her mother that she had spoken with Brooks Houck, Crystal's boyfriend. Brooks informed her that he had not seen Crystal since Friday. According to Brooks, the last time he saw her, she was up playing games on her phone before he went to bed. When Brooks woke up the next morning, Crystal was gone. He speculated that Crystal may have gone to visit her cousin's house to celebrate the 4th of July. However, Sherry's concern grew as she struggled to get in touch with her daughter. Sherry reported Crystal missing to the police department, and as she was there, her son, Casey, received a phone call from a friend who had seen Crystal's car on the side of the road. This discovery worried Casey and his father, Tommy Ballard, as they knew Crystal would not have abandoned the vehicle of her own accord. Upon receiving the call, Casey and Tommy felt a sense of dread in their stomachs. Upon arrival at the location, Casey and Tommy saw Crystal's car, which had a flat tire. However, this discovery only reinforced their belief that something was seriously wrong. If Crystal had encountered car trouble, she would have certainly reached out to one of them for assistance. The idea that she would have pulled over and tried to fix it on her own was unfathomable. As they examined the car further, Casey and Tommy noticed Crystal's keys, phone, and purse on the passenger seat. These items served as additional evidence that something was amiss. Crystal would not have gone anywhere without her belongings, and their presence in the car further heightened their fears for her well-being. After Crystal's father and brother found her vehicle on the Bluegrass Parkway, they promptly notified the Nelson County Sheriff's Department. Investigators arrived at the scene and examined Crystal's car. Despite finding no signs of a struggle, something stood out to them. The driver's seat seemed out of place for someone of Crystal's height. This peculiar observation raised suspicions that someone else may have been driving her car. As the authorities continued their investigation, they sought assistance from any witnesses who may have noticed something on the parkway. However, no one came forward with any valuable information. The police decided to turn to the media in the hope of generating leads from the public. They released Crystal's photo and appealed to the public for assistance in finding her. Unfortunately, no one came forward with any significant leads. Tommy, Crystal's father, organized search parties to locate her. Unfortunately, the hot and humid weather made the searches difficult. Many individuals showed up to help look for Crystal, but one notable absence was her boyfriend, Brooks Houck. The police became suspicious of Brooks's apparent lack of concern regarding Crystal's disappearance since she was not only the mother of his child. When detectives questioned Brooks, he claimed that Crystal and their son had accompanied him to his family's farm the previous evening. According to Brooks, they returned home around midnight, after which he went to bed. He stated that Crystal remained awake, engrossed in her phone as she often did, playing games. Brooks claimed that when he woke up at 7 a.m., his son was already in bed with him, but Crystal was nowhere to be found. Initially, he speculated that Crystal may have gone out with her cousin. However, those who know Crystal well contradicted this claim, as she never would have left her son behind. Crystal and her two-year-old were attached at the hip. Brooke, Crystal's sister, 
believed Crystal was planning to leave Brooks. According to Brooke, Brooks had lied to Crystal and failed to show an emotional attachment to her. Crystal had confided in her mother, Sherry, that she wanted to leave Brooks, but admitted that it would not be easy because he was controlling. Casey, Crystal's brother, had also recently noticed tension between Brooks and Crystal and witnessed several heated arguments. The police asked Brooks to come to the police station to take a polygraph test, which came back inconclusive. Afterward, Brooks sat with the police for a formal interview. Detectives had collected footage that confirmed details of Brooks's story. A video showed his truck going into his family's farm, and the footage revealed the car leaving the property around midnight. However, because Brooks's truck had tinted windows, the police couldn't see who was inside the vehicle at the time. According to Brooks, while at his parents' farm, he did chores, set a fire for building materials, and waited for the fire to die before driving home. During the interview, the police inquired about a short phone call that Brooks had on his way back from his parents' farm with a business associate, Steve Lawson, that lasted for only 13 seconds. In order to clarify matters, Brooks decided to have Steve Lawson explain the conversation to the police during the interview and call him. Steve Lawson said he had called Brooks to acquire the numbers for a rental property. However, the police found this claim suspicious, as it seemed like a scripted response. Steve Lawson explained Brooks told him that he needed to wait until he got home because Crystal was the one who handled that type of stuff. The police expressed confusion, wondering why Brooks, who was in Crystal's company at the time of the call, had to wait to talk to her in person. They questioned why Brooks could not have handed her the phone and had the conversation right then and there. In the midst of Brooks's interview, he received a phone call from his brother, Nick, an officer at the Bardstown Police Department. Nick advised Brooks to exit the interrogation room immediately. The police were not convinced that Crystal had run away and abandoned her car on the side of the Bluegrass Parkway. It seemed to the police that something had happened to Crystal while she was at the brooks Hauk family farm. As the investigation into Crystal's disappearance continued, people called the police and reported seeing Brooks's truck and his brother Nick's police car at the Hauk family farm. Detectives became convinced that the brothers were at the farm disposing of evidence in Crystal's disappearance. To gather more information, the police decided to call in Nick, Brooks's brother, for questioning. They confronted him with the fact that he had been spotted at his family's farm on July 8th and asked him to explain why he had been there. However, Nick denied having any knowledge of what they were talking about and claimed not to have been out there that night. Despite Nick's denial, the police pressed on and asked him to point blank if he and his brother had destroyed or hidden evidence involving Crystal's disappearance. Nick adamantly denied that they had engaged in wrongdoing and insisted that his brother could not harm someone. Furthermore, he said there was no conceivable scenario where he, as a police officer, would have assisted Brooks in covering up a crime. After the interview, the police asked Nick if he would be willing to take a polygraph test, and he agreed. Nick failed the polygraph on two questions. The first question was, do you know where the crystal is right now? The second question was, are you hiding any information about what happened to the crystal? Despite failing the polygraph, Nick maintained that he was being 100% honest. On October 15th, the police investigating Crystal's disappearance named her boyfriend, Brooks Hauk, as the prime suspect. On the same day, Brooks's brother Nick was fired from Joss as an officer at the Bardstown Police Department for impeding their investigation. Even though the police were fairly sure they knew who caused Crystal's disappearance and how she died, they didn't have enough evidence to make an arrest. The police feared taking their suspect to court and not having enough evidence. If the suspect were to get acquitted, the police couldn't charge them with Crystal's murder again because of double jeopardy. FBI agents and law enforcement agencies across Kentucky joined forces with Crystal's friends, family, volunteers, and missing people organizations to conduct extensive searches at the Hauk family farm, a sprawling property spanning 240 acres. The searches continued daily, leaving Crystal's loved ones terrified and grasping for hope. While they hoped to find Crystal alive and well, they truly desired some answers. At the Hauk family farm, 
Investigators conducted a thorough search of the ashes of a fire, but no human remains were uncovered. However, in the pile of ashes, remnants of clothing were found. But the investigators were unable to connect these pieces to the case of Crystal's disappearance. The police served multiple search warrants on the Hauk family farm, targeting cars and residences. Despite their efforts, none of these searches yielded significant leads or evidence related to Crystal's case. A $100,000 reward was offered for information about Crystal's disappearance, but still no one came forward. Tommy Ballard, Crystal's father, followed every lead he got in Crystal's disappearance. He was determined to find his daughter and was not going to give up. Crystal's disappearance affected Tommy more than it did anyone else who loved her, because in January 1979, his pregnant sister was murdered by her husband and his friend. They shot and beat her, and then set her remains on fire and scattered them on a farm. The men who committed this heinous crime were eventually caught years later, and they were found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Despite the challenges he faced, Tommy remained steadfast in his pursuit of Crystal's whereabouts. Tommy followed every lead, no matter how small or insignificant it may have seemed. He canvassed the neighborhood, conducted interviews, and reached out to anyone who might have information. Tommy, determined to find answers about his daughter's disappearance, allocated his savings towards hiring cadaver dogs in a private eye. With each passing day, he kept meticulous records of all the tips he followed and every clue he uncovered. His dedication to the investigation led him to meet frequently with the police to share his findings and seek their guidance. In November 2016, Tommy Ballard took his 11-year-old grandson, Crystal's son, out on an early morning hunting trip on their property. Tommy's wife, Sherry, watched them leave. As they departed, Sherry couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. She couldn't help but quickly pray to God, asking for a watchful eye over them in the woods. Sherry returned to her bed, trying to relax. However, only minutes later, a phone call would shatter her peace. As she picked up the receiver, Sherry recognized the voice of her grandson, Crystal's son. His voice was filled with panic and terror. Mima, Papa has been shot, he cried. Her heart sank. Panic washed over her. She quickly rushed to the bathroom, grabbing clothes along the way. Her grandson was still crying on the phone, his voice trembling with fear, so she reassured him, telling him that she was calling 911. As she quickly dressed, Sherry's mind raced with thoughts of her husband's well-being. When Sherry arrived at the scene, she was immediately overcome with grief. She rushed over to Tommy, shaking him frantically. However, as she did so, she noticed a concerning sight. Blood began pouring out of his nose. The officers and witnesses who had arrived at the scene quickly pulled her off Tommy so that the medics could work on him. However, Sherry was already aware that her husband was gone. Tommy Ballard was pronounced dead at the scene. Tommy Ballard had been shot one time in the chest. Initially, the police claimed that Tommy's death was the result of a hunting accident. However, Sherry was furious upon hearing this declaration. She insisted that this was no hunting accident, but rather a murder. She exclaimed, This is my husband, and it's a murder, and you know it. After an investigation into Tommy's death, investigators ruled out the idea that Tommy took his own life as the cause of death, as they determined that his weapon had not been fired. Additionally, the investigators ruled out the involvement of Tommy's 11-year-old grandson in the shooting. Eventually, the Kentucky State Police later informed the public that they were investigating the death as a murder. The Ballard family believes that Tommy was murdered because he was getting too close to uncovering the truth about what happened to his missing daughter. They think the people responsible for hurting Crystal wanted Tommy out of the way, fearing that he might reveal the truth. In 2022, the FBI conducted a five-day investigation into the disappearance of Crystal. Investigators returned to the Hauk family farm, hoping to find more evidence. The FBI's goal was to collect evidence that would help them hold the individual responsible for Crystal's disappearance accountable. Despite not revealing if any items of evidentiary value were recovered from the search, an FBI spokesperson confirmed in October 2022 that the agency would be analyzing all of the evidence collected at the FBI's lab in Quantico. As the investigation into Crystal Rogers' disappearance continued, 
the Kentucky Attorney General made a crucial decision to appoint a special prosecutor to assist in the prosecution of criminal charges related to the deaths of Crystal Rogers and her father, Tommy Ballard. Crystal's mother, Sherry Ballard, was aware of the appointment and wholeheartedly supported the decision. She believed this measure was necessary to ensure justice was served in her loved one's cases. The appointment of a special prosecutor brought a fresh perspective and independent expertise to the case. Sherry Ballard recognized the importance of having a dedicated team of prosecutors focused on unraveling the complex web of evidence and bringing the perpetrators to justice. She believed that by having a dedicated prosecutor, there would be greater attention to detail and a more comprehensive understanding of the case. Sherry Ballard's commitment to seeking justice for Crystal and Tommy was unwavering. The special prosecutor had the necessary resources and knowledge to conduct a thorough investigation and gather the evidence required to present a compelling case in court. In addition to the appointment of a special prosecutor, Sherry Ballard also appreciated the fact that this decision demonstrated the seriousness of the case and the importance of holding those responsible for the deaths of Crystal and Tommy accountable. It sent a clear message that the justice system was taking this matter seriously and was determined to bring justice to the victims' families. In July 2023, a grand jury in Kentucky indicted a 32-year-old man named Joseph Lawson on two charges of conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with physical evidence in relation to the case of Crystal's disappearance. Two months later, Crystal's boyfriend, Brooks Houck, was arrested and charged with murder and tampering with physical evidence. The judge set Brooks's bond at $10 million, and he was ordered to stay away from Crystal's family. Brooks Houck was arrested in 2022 for several traffic violations. He was required to pay a series of fines and was released. Many people in Bardstown were overjoyed when Brooks Houck was arrested for Crystal's murder. Although the news was devastating for everyone to come to terms with the reality that Crystal was not just missing, but had been killed, there was a sense of satisfaction in knowing that justice would be served. The arrest of Houck brought a sense of closure and relief to those who were affected by Crystal's tragic death. It provided some measure of solace to know that the person who had taken her life was being held accountable for their actions. The community of Bardstown united behind Crystal's family and expressed support and solidarity during this difficult time. They hoped that the arrest would pave the way for justice to be served and that the perpetrator would receive a fair and just punishment. As the investigation continued and more information came to light, the community remained vigilant and hopeful that justice would prevail. Brooks Houck made his first appearance in court one month after his arrest in October 2023. However, his appearance was not in person, but virtually. The hearing was a crucial moment in the case, as prosecutors revealed new information regarding another unsolved murder in Bardstown. The judge asked Special Prosecutor Shane Young if they were looking into any other cases that may be linked to Crystal's case. According to the prosecutor, they were also investigating Tommy Ballard's death, Crystal's father, and felt the two murders were connected. In fact, the special prosecutor said they believed they were in possession of the gun that killed Tommy, claiming they purchased the firearm from Nick Houck and were currently testing it, but believe that gun killed Crystal's father. The special prosecutor has claimed that they bought a firearm from Nick Houck, who allegedly used a fake name during the sale. According to the prosecutor, the caliber of the rifle matches the one used to shoot and kill Tommy Ballard. They have mentioned five criteria they are examining, claiming that the gun has matched four of them so far. Crystal's grandfather and Tommy's father voiced their satisfaction upon hearing the special prosecutors linking the two murders in court. They express their hope for justice to be swiftly achieved in both cases. However, upon hearing about the allegations put forward by the special prosecutor, Rose Mary, Brooks, and Nick Houck's mother refused to answer any questions. Furthermore, during the court hearing, the prosecutor also alleges that the Houck family had secretly recorded the grand jury proceedings. The prosecutor alleged that Brooks Houck's sister, brother, mother, brother-in-law, and mother's boyfriend were all involved in this illicit activity. According to the prosecutor, by secretly recording the proceedings, 
the Hauk family sought to gain an unfair advantage and ensure their stories remained aligned. Attorneys for Brooks Hauk filed a request to disqualify the Nelson County judge presiding over the case and request that he be replaced. The attorneys claim that the judge has had a hostile view of Brooks Hauk since 2017, which they believe to be biased and unfair. Additionally, the attorneys argue that the bail set at $10 million is excessive and should be reconsidered. The attorneys argue that having a hostile judge on the case will greatly hinder Brooks's ability to receive a fair trial. They contend that the judge's previous comments and actions indicate a clear lack of impartiality. In addition to asking for disqualification, the attorneys also request that the court move swiftly in ruling on this matter, arguing that time is of the essence and that a new, unbiased judge should be put in place as soon as possible to ensure a fair and just outcome. Several weeks later, the Kentucky Appeals Court has ruled that Book Hauk will remain in jail on a $10 million bond. Additionally, the court has issued a ruling on the case officially denying Hauk's request to dismiss the judge presiding over Brooks's trials. In December 2023, Stephen Lawson was indicted on two charges of conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with physical evidence. The media widely reported that Stephen Lawson had a son named Joseph Lawson, who had been arrested on charges related to the disappearance of Crystal.